if you go and talk to the workers on the Baltic coast who were the vanguard of the solidarity movement, of the icebreaker, they are extremely unhappy, many of them. And one of the reasons is a sense of historical injustice. They say, look, just over there are these former secret policemen and former Communist Party apparatchiks, and they're now doing extremely well. They're millionaires. They're living it up. They look like the winners, and we're the losers. And that's unjust. And that you see versions of that all over post-communist Europe. Now, it seems to me that having an exit for those in power is essential to getting a peaceful transition. You have to do that. There has to be a way out. So to some extent, them having the opportunity of exchanging political power for, say, economic power, the privatization of the nomenclatura, is essential to that kind of revolution. Ernest Gellner rather wonderfully called it the price of velvet. You have to pay the price of velvet. But then know that there is a price. And my conclusion is twofold. If you're going to do a velvet revolution, first of all, you have to have some sort of public, symbolic confrontation with the difficult past. Not in the courts, not by the guillotine, but some sort of <coughs> symbolic confrontation. And I think actually that's something that should have happened in Central Europe and didn't happen. I would say a necessary complement to a velvet revolution is a truth commission. Yeah? So at least we know the truth. Secondly, the rule of law. The rule of law, which has been much too weak. I think this was mentioned already in the post-communist transitions. Uh, Václav Klaus's famous slogan, speed is more important than accuracy. Oh, no, it's not. Accuracy is very important, including the rule of law for a durable transition.